there's a new release imminent. I've got its identical older brother. Yes, the Dambusters Lancaster right here on Gary's Stuff. Hi there, I'm Gary, welcome to my channel. Welcome back if you've been here before. Yes, this week I am building the Avro Lancaster in 172nd scale from FX, the Dan Busters Special Conversion. I'll be having a look at the history of the Dan Busters. I'll have a look at the various kits of the Dan Busters Lank that are available and their history. And of course, I'll be having a look inside here to show you what you get for your money if you buy one. Now, if you've already got one and want to know how to build it, that's going to be in the companion build video, which will be coming up very, very soon on this channel. How do you know when it's going to come up? Simple. If you subscribe to the channel and hit the bell, you'll get notified whenever I put up a new video. And of course, if you like any of my videos, please do remember, give them the imperial thumbs up on the like button below. And of course, if you want to give a bit more concrete support, you can do that through any of my online partner programs, including the Airfix affiliate program. Click on the link through there, buy anything at the Airfix store, and at no extra cost to you, Airfix donates some money to the channel, which is nice. And of course, you can also donate through uh, Super Thanks and through becoming a channel member. So, enough of all that. Let's have a look at the history of one of the most famous raids ever taken, the Dam Busters. The Dam's Raid, officially called Operation Chastise, took place over the night of 16th to 17th May 1943 with the aim of breaching some of the large dams of Germany's industrial heartland. The dams provided hydroelectric power to industry in the Ruhr Valley, as well as fresh water for steel making, for drinking water and water to maintain the level of important canals. Specially adapted Lancaster bombers each carried a single 4.2 ton cylindrical bomb, codenamed Upkeep, that was given a backward spin at 500 RPM before dropping so that it bounced on the surface of the water. This enabled the bomb to pass over anti-torpedo nets and other defences and to explode underwater right next to the dam wall. The bombs, and the means to deploy them, were invented by Barnes Wallace, the brilliant aeronautical engineer. Trials revealed that the bomb had to be dropped from very low level, just 18 metres, to withstand the impact of the water. As a result, the spray thrown up could be hazardous, as this pilot found out when he lost some rear panels from his aircraft in testing. A new squadron, number 617, was formed under the command of the 24-year-old Wing Commander Guy Gibson to undertake the mission. Many of the crews were hand-picked veterans, such as Harold Mickey Martin and Henry Dingy Young. Some were very much less experienced. On the 16th of May, just two months after the project was given the go-ahead, the squadron took off to fly at very low level and at night, all the way to the target and back. This brought its own dangers. Some aircraft were shot down by low-level flak. Others, like e Easy, flown by Bob Barlow, hit power lines or similar obstructions. Barlow's bomb became loose when his aircraft crashed with the loss of all of the crew. The bomb survived and was recovered by the Germans. The first dam attacked by Gibson's group was the Myrna Dam. It was breached after four direct hits, a gap about 76 metres wide and 90 metres deep, allowed an estimated 330 million tonnes of water to cascade down the valley in a 10 metre tall deluge. A second group breached the Ada Dam, this time with two direct hits and one explosion on the crest of the dam. Flooding from this breach was seen at Castle, some 35 kilometres downriver. An attack by Joe McCarthy and T. Tommy on the Sorpa Dam resulted in only minor damage, 
as it was a wide earthen dam and quite unsuited to this kind of weapon. Of the 19 Lancasters that took off for the raid, eight were lost. 53 aircrew were killed, with three more taken prisoner. It's estimated that 1,600 people were killed on the ground, including 750 prisoners of war and foreign forced labourers. The tactical and strategic success of the attack has been argued over ever since. A lack of follow-up with conventional bombing to prevent repairs meant the raid didn't produce the intended knockout blow to German industry. However, these repairs did divert large resources of personnel and materials at a critical time in the war and provided a significant propaganda boost to the population of Britain and its allies. 617 Squadron went on to become a specialist strike force using the Tall Boy and Grand Slam earthquake bombs to attack the battleship turpits, U-boat pens, rail bridges and tunnels and the V weapon sites. The squadron is still flying today. It operates the Lockheed Martin F-35B Lightning. The final surviving crew member from the dam's raid, squadron leader George Johnny Johnson, passed away in 2022. He was bomb aimer on Joe McCarthy's T for Tommy, the kit I'm going to be making. The kit I'm going to be making is from the new tooling introduced in 2012. This was also available in the same year as a gift set with paints, brush and glue. This very same kit is being released in 2023 with the markings for Guy Gibson's G for George and new box art and will also feature in a 617 Squadron commemorative gift set bundled with the new F-35B starter kit. The first Airfix Dambasta Lancaster was released in 172nd scale in 1993 in time for the 50th anniversary of the Dams Raid. This was a new parts retool of the 1980 kit. Incidentally, this was also the base for the 2001 release of the Grand Slam carrying Lancaster, another specialised aircraft associated with 617 Squadron. The first company with a model kit of the Dambaster Lancaster was Revel in 1965, based on their 1963 tooling of the aircraft. Revel went on to release a new tooling of their Lancaster in 2007, with the Dambusters version following in 2009. Hasegawa released a kit of the Dambuster Lancaster in 2005 based on a new tooling of the Lank from the same year. They followed these with many Lancaster versions, including 617 Squadron aircraft carrying the Tall Boy bomb on the raid on the Tirpitz, as well as the Grand Slam bombs. In other scales, Hong Kong models created a 3-in-1 Lancaster in 132nd scale in 2018 that included an option for a Dambusters aircraft, an option they released in a specific boxing the following year. Tamiya released a 148th scale Lancaster in 1975 with a Dambusters version in the same year. This was released again in 2012 with a Dambusters or Grand Slam option and this is being re-released in 2023. And finally, A model released a 1 144th scale kit of the Dambuster Lancaster in 2009, based on their own new tooling of the Lancaster in the same scale from 2008. As usual, on the older Airfix boxes, um, the twin stripe red. Now they, they have a much bigger picture on the front now, but this is a slightly older designer box, but still beautiful artwork from Adam Tooby as usual. Um, on here we have the two scheme options for AJE and AJT. And the fact it's uh, specifically Operation Chastise the Dams Raid, 17th May 1947. On this side we have some of the CAD renders from the design of the actual kit. Um, from the other side, upside down, still haven't found out why, but we will soon, is a brief history of the aircraft, the two options here, uh, exactly what they are. AJT is uh, 
Joe McCarthy's plane and AJ E is Bob Barlow's plane who sadly died in the raid. Colour call outs as usual, just numbers. Um, they'll be the same for both aircraft. Uh, skill level 3, this is quite a lot to do, but not insurmountable. And if you collect them, 3 flying hours. If you don't collect them, you might want to consider giving them to Models of Heroes. Check them out on, on the link below. It's an excellent charity. Do support them if you can. Then we'll have a look and see what we get inside the box. And I've already opened this one, as you'll see. First of all, got the instructions here. We'll go through those a bit more later on. We have the scheme layouts, which are pretty much identical, to be perfectly honest, apart from the uh, registration and the squadron codes. Um, I have purchased separately a set of masks because there's a lot of glass on this and I'm not cutting them myself, so I bought one of those. I popped it in the box to keep track of it. You do not get that from Airfix. So it's quite clear, you do not get that as part of your kit. And then the box is filled with the parts. Here you can see it's a big old piece of uh, transparent part there. Loads and loads of grey sprues. We'll go through those individually in a moment. Frame A, uh, the top side of the wings, port side of the fuselage, uh, the main central part of the floor, one of the spars, one of the fins with its rudder, um, parts of the tailplane, elevator and main wheel. Frame B very much similar, starboard side of the cockpit, um, lower halves of the wings, again fin and rudder, tailplane elevator here, these are part of the, the back, probably the um, wheel bays, another spar, more main wheels. Frame C, um, undercarriage on this side, uh, main bomb bay doors, one of which has fallen off in the bag, which we won't be using, uh, gear doors, um, mid upper turret fairing, which we won't be using, bomb shackles, which we won't be using, so a lot of this stuff won't be used, so these are parts of the main gear, and one crew figure, which is, uh, seems like seven crew members, that seems a bit crazy, but there we go. Frame D has the flaps, the um, components for a lot of the, to do with the engine bay, and here there's a lot of things to do with the cockpit and gun turrets, things like that. Uh, the rear guns are there. Uh, the basis of the turrets is an instrument panel, and so on and so forth. Bits and pieces, some of the navigating equipment here. Tail wheel there. There's no frame E. Um, I'm going to take a hazard, I guess, that frame E was to do with the um, Hercules engine version, which was the B2, which I made last year, because these are all components that are murder engines, basically. All of the engine nacelles, the exhausts, uh, propellers, so on and so forth. Two types of propellers as well, which is kind of interesting. Then the last of the grey plastic is frame G, and this is the bomb. The uh, bouncing bomb, the Wallace bomb, is here. Um, blanking points for the mid upper turret, which they didn't have on the aircraft, it was blanked off. And a bomb trolley, as well as a bomb carriage for the actual aircraft. And frame H, finally, which is, of course, all the transparency work. Um, all the turrets, blisters, we'll be using those because I had blister, a blister on the um, cockpit so I could lean out and see the converging beams of light to get their altitude, the height, correct? Height above the water, not altitude. Um, main cover for the cockpit here, nose, um, side windows, so on and so forth. There's a few of these that obviously won't be being used because Things like the mid-upper turret were blanked off and whatever. I don't think they carried H2S either. 
But there we go. All there. Let's have a look at the plastic a bit more detail. Um, the panel lines here are really very pronounced. But I think that might be to our favour later because remember most of this is going to be black. So trying to highlight those even with a sort of a pale grey panel line wash is going to be a bit of an issue. And the same on the wings are very dark. The upper lower surfaces are black obviously. Um, upper surfaces are standard um, earth and green camouflage. Um, I don't know, maybe they're a little heavy, maybe they're a little clumsy, but I think they're going to work on this particular aircraft. Wheels are big, I don't know what this black gunk here is, but I'm sure that will come off. Fairly sure it will, anyway. So we go, pieces are, are fairly well moulded. This is, you know, a, not a brand new mould, so do have to watch out for bits of flash here and there on some of the sharper edges. And some of the seams here are getting a little so if I can get a decent view you can see some of the seams are getting a little prominent but otherwise then it's not too bad it's relatively clean this of course is where it's, it, things are a little bit annoying at these propellers because the the feed feeds the gates come right into the middle of the prop and the back end of the prop here is getting a little bit flash on it but it's not the end of the world, it's not too bad. I mean, if we look at some of these um, these gun barrels here, for example, they're actually pretty good still. It's not too bad at all, really. Let's have a look at these exhausts here. And they're pretty clean. Now, if we have a look at some of the really small parts, the DF aerial, the control wheel, they're relatively clean, the undercarriage pieces aren't actually bad at all looking at them so yeah I don't think it's going to be too much clean up needed it's just going to be the the seams that are going to need a bit of attention but you know other than that things are pretty much fine the instructions was quite a lot of them for a start there's quite a a lengthy introduction here um, talking about the dams raid for example um, in five languages as usual, uh, general instructions, uh, translation of what all the icons mean, and then into the build itself. Now, you will notice on here, compared with modern instructions, there's no spot colours, no red, this, this would be red and yellow, um, This the logo would be coloured, and inside you'd have some amount of um, for example, here, here you're building the, the seat. The seat here would be red to, to reinforce that that was the last thing you did was to put that on. For example, there's none of that in here. They're not shaded 3D views. They're just 3D line drawings. Um, where you need to paint specifically things like the interior green paints, they do highlight. They're not as pretty to look at as today's instructions but I don't think they're going to be much of an issue you know they're fairly clear even with things like the undercarriage which is always tricky to do um, instructions for they seem pretty good so yeah that's all very nice um, obviously there's the option here to have the bomb on a trolley or in the aircraft which is fine and then because they run out, you know, because of the way the printing's there, they have a couple of blank pages, so they call it modeler notes. Just to make it look like they're meant to do that all along, which they didn't. But anyway, the instructions look pretty much as usual, just not quite as colourful as they are today. Decal sheet, as usual, printed by Cartograph, so as usual, the colours are nice, the blue and the red look very accurate. The red of the um, squadron markings also is very clean because that's the same red. Uh, markings for two aircraft, so um, AJ is the squadron, 617 squadron, then E and T are the aircraft. Oddly, um, one of them has got the G on it, which means it has to be guarded at all times on the ground, and the other one hasn't, so I don't know why, that's, why they're different. 
thankfully very very few uh, uh, stencils on this and these are for the bomb so really not that much on here fortunately to do it's all about the build rather than the decoration on this one I think and also making it look good um, with the, a little bit of weathering perhaps and stuff like that but yeah other than that all looks very straightforward now because these decals are designed to go on black they're a bit difficult to see the print quality of them here but look there's this little map here that goes on the navigator's desk and it does actually have the route to the Ruhr marks on it, which I think is a nice little touch. Um, other than that, there's not that much in the way of decals on here. There's certainly not much in the way of stencils, which is a good thing. But you can see, they're nice and crisp, but nice and clean. Uh, the print is good. They're going to look fantastic when they go on. Okay, as for the schemes, this is the A scheme flown by Joe McCarthy, DFC. Um, it's, this is the one with the guard uh, registration that says it's got to be guarded at all times. And this is also the one with the uh, low the belly machine gun as well. Everything's pretty straightforward on these. They're, the thing I notice also with here is that in the modern printing of these uh, colour layouts and all that, the quality of the print is so much better that you can see the four colour dots in here and they're, they're pretty awful, to be honest. Um, the printing nowadays is much, much better of this than this is. But, you know, it'll do for what we have to worry about. And the B scheme for this aircraft is the one flown by Robert Barlow, DFC, Australia, Royal Australian Air Force, um, who sadly the aircraft and indeed the crew were lost on the raid, which is a terribly sad thing. So, you know, in a way it's a tribute to a, a crew that gave everything for this raid. It's a nice touch that they decided to do that as well, I think. It's a good thing. So there you go, you've got a choice of the two two schemes to do. This aircraft doesn't have the, the belly gun, by the way. So those are your choices on this. Obviously the brand new one, um, about to be released by FX, or very recently released by FX, if you're watching this later in the year, has got Guy Gibson's aircraft markings in it. But otherwise it's identical. There it is then, the 172nd scale Dan Buster's Lancaster from Airfix. Quite a lot to do. I've built a Lancaster before for the channel, which was the Hercules version, Bristol Hercules Mark II aircraft. So um, there weren't any massively difficult bits in there, or major bits in there, but it's quite a lengthy build. With the Merlin engines, it's going to look great. With the upkeep bomb, it's going to look even better. So come back for that. Uh, if you want to know when that comes out, of course, if you haven't done so yet, subscribe to the channel. Hit the bell and you'll be told when all my videos come out, as they do. And of course, anything you like, please let me know by imperial thumbs up on the like button below. Come back for the build of this lovely kit. I'll see you very soon. Thank you so much for watching. Goodbye now.